الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد So my dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله خير for joining in today um, So today we are going to uh, cover the third juz of Quran inshallah um, as I mentioned to you yesterday that in 45 minutes of uh, this dars, it is impossible to cover every aspect of the juz. Um, for example, in the second juz yesterday, we covered only a few ayahs and then uh, so many important ayahs, uh, uh, I mean, I could not cover them because of the lack of time. And um, so today we'll inshallah cover as many, as many important ayahs of uh, third juz as possible inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, do that inshallah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, my dear brothers and sisters, um, the third juz has many important topics. Let me quickly go over some of the important topics um, of the third juz. Um, Third juz has Ayatul Kursi that talks about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third juz talks about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam uh, and his conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, but the third juz also talks about the significance and the rewards for, don for donating your money and your time uh, in the spread of deen for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for uh, helping people out. And then the third just talks about how uh, taking and giving riba, interest is haram in our religion. And then uh, our, uh, the third just also talks about uh, the importance that when we give a loan to someone, uh, we must write it down. In fact, the lengthiest ayah of the entire Quran is the fifth last ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. The fifth last ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah talks about just one topic. And that is that whenever you give loan to someone, whenever you take loan from someone, always write it down and have at least two witnesses over that. Then um, Surah Al-Baqarah concludes with, with dua. And that dua is, uh, uh, is uh, the last ayah of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah And then this is the dua for our forgiveness. The third juz also has Surah Al-Imran. In fact, Surah Al-Imran starts right after Surah Al-Baqarah. Now in Surah Al-Imran, as you see, Al, Al means family, Imran. Imran is the name of Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam's father. So Imran was the father of Maryam. So this means that Imran was the uh, grandfather of Jesus, of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And Al means family. So uh, Allah talked about Zakaria, Yahya, uh, Maryam, and, uh, and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah have called, I mean, this surah is called Al-Imran. Now this surah has, of course, the story of uh, Zakaria and Yahya and Maryam and, uh, and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So inshallah, we'll cover that. Uh, so these are some of the topics of the third Jews. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, cover as many um, ayahs as possible today. And my dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned to you earlier, let me repeat it, that whenever we uh, try to learn Quran, we must humble ourselves to Allah, that Allah, we do not know anything. Whatever you can teach us, we'll, we are going to know only that much. So, uh, so uh, with this humility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant knowledge to you. With arrogance, nothing could be achieved. Neither in this world, nor in the life after. 
So let's humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So having said that, the 20, 255th ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, guess, guess which, which ayah is that? 255th ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. I think all of you have guessed it right. And that is the great ayah which is called Ayatul Kursi. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is the Sayyidah Ayatul, Ayatul Quran. That this is the best and the leader of all ayahs of Quran, Ayatul Kursi. One time our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Ubay ibn Kaab, now, Ubay ibn Kaab was Katib al Wahi. He was among those fortunate Sahaba who were authorized by Rasulullah to write Wahi. Meaning, when our Rasul will receive a certain ayah of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Rasulullah to order Sahaba to write it. So, Rasulullah picked a handful of Sahaba. Among them was Ubay ibn Kaab. So he was a very, very important Sahabi. So Ubay ibn Kaab was Katib al Wahi, or one of the Katib al Wahi. So one time our Rasul tested his knowledge. Rasulullah said, O oh Ubay, tell me which ayah is the greatest ayah in Quran. So Ubay ibn Kaab said, I think it is Ayatul Kursi. So Rasulullah was immensely pleased. And he said, Oh Abu Munzir, which is the kunniya of Ubay. He said, Oh Abu, Abu Munzir, con uh, congratulations to you because you, Allah has given you knowledge of Quran. And then Rasulullah said, Yes, no doubt, Ayatul Kursi is the leader of all ayahs of Quran. Furthermore, once our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is very important for all of us to imply on our everyday life, and that is that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the meaning of that is that whenever a person will read Ayatul Kursi after every Fard Salah, then the only thing that is stopping him from entering into paradise is his death. Which means that after a person will die, you know, the barakat of Jannah will come over that person. So brothers and sisters, this is very easy, very easy to do. Alhamdulillah, all of us pray five times salah every day. All we have to do is, before we talk to anyone, read Ayatul Kursi. If you have not been doing this so far, don't forget, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah forgive you. But from this time onwards, start reading Ayatul Kursi after every first salah before you, you talk to anyone. And have this belief that, that after our death, inshallah, we'll go to Jannah because of the barakah of reciting Ayatul Kursi. Okay, so this is Ayatul Kursi. Now, Ayatul Kursi is the greatest ayah of Quran because it has it is talking about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very unique way so I'm going to translate it for you I hope inshallah you will understand it and then you can consult the book of Tafasir to go into the details of this so Allah said Allahu la ilaha illa hu Allah is the one that there's no God but him al Hay. Al-Hay means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever living. He never dies. Al-Qayyum, he is the sustainer. Allah is Al-Qayyum, meaning Allah is the one who is sustaining everything. La ta'akhuduhu sinatum wa la naum. The somba never overcomes him. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never gets tired. Wala naum and Allah never sleeps. Lahu ma fil samawati wa ma fil ard. Whatever is between the sky and the earth, it is all 
in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah have created it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sustaining it. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Who can intercede for anyone on the day of judgment? Who can do that? Yes, إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Except when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give permission. Meaning, Allah saying, do not think that because you belong to a certain family, you belong to a certain clan, you can say, oh, I'll get the shafaat of that saint. Oh, I'll get the shafaat of that uh, certain person because he is very uh, pious. So I'm his grandson, granddaughter, blah, blah. blah. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to paradise. Allah is saying, no. Who can man Who can do shafaat? Who can intercede for anyone? Illa bi'idni. Except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would wish so. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Whatever is in front of you and behind you. It is known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ And Allah's knowledge is such that nobody can know, nobody can share the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast. You and I cannot get one drop from the ocean of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, illa bima sha. Accept what, whatever Allah would wish. Meaning Allah has given us a little drop of water from his knowledge. Illa bima sha. And that's what he wished. But the rest of the ocean belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's his knowledge. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْآمِ And the kursi, the chair, the chair of Allah, is bigger than the sky and the earth. سَمَاوَاتِ وَالْآمِ وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا And remember that Allah is not tired. Allah never gets tired of running the show, whether of this world or the life hereafter. All the shows are run by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ Ali al Azim, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most exalted. And al Azim, Allah is the supreme. So in this ayah you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about his greatness. And Allah is putting all of our weird imaginations about Allah to rest. That Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the supreme. So my dear brothers and sisters, we should recite Ayatul Kursi as much as we can. And as I said, that after every fasala, do not forget to recite Ayatul Kursi inshallah. Okay, so after Ayatul Kursi is the next ayah, which is ayah number 256. Now the ayah 256, the first Part of the ayah is the one that I'm going to briefly touch on. It says, La ikraha fiddeen. Just this much. La ikraha fiddeen. Which means that, that there is no compulsion in religion. Ikraha means compulsion. La ikraha fiddeen. There is no compulsion in religion. What it means is that in Islam, you cannot force anyone to become Muslim. You know, you can do da'wah, and we should do da'wah. We should convey the message of Islam to as many people as possible. And after that, leave it to that individual. Make dua for that person. But you cannot blackmail a person. That, you know, accept Islam, or I'll do this to you. Accept Islam, otherwise you'll be in trouble. No, 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 no. In Islam, it is not so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly says right after Ayatul Kursi, La ikraha fiddeen. There is no compulsion in religion. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Rasulullah, Innaka la tahdi man ahbabt. Rasulullah was eager to see that his own uncle Abu Talib, who was like his father. You know, Abu Talib had nurtured Rasulullah. So, uh, Wasallam, since Rasulullah was a small baby. So Abu Talib was like the father to Rasulullah Wasallam. So Rasulullah Wasallam wanted his uncle to become Muslim. 
And when he was dying, Abu Talib was dying, Rasulullah Wasallam eagerness went higher and higher. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ O Muhammad Wasallam, you cannot guide anyone. You cannot. Right? Allah said, I know you love your uncle. أَحْبَبْتَ You know, I know that you love him. But you cannot guide. Because the control of the hearts is not in your hand. It's in the hand of Allah only. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ but only Allah is the one who can guide anyone that he wishes. So in Islam, there is no compulsion, remember. So those people, Islamophobic people, who in different countries have spread this, this wrong notion that Islam spread by sword. That is completely nonsense. Islam had never spread by force. Never. So whenever somebody tells you that in history it has spread by sword, that person is a liar. Quran is good enough for a person to read and know what is right from wrong. For example, in America, in Europe, in the Western world right now, Islam, is, alhamdulillah, is spreading so fast. Where is the sword here? Who is forcing people here? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a country where every person is free. Nobody can force nobody. Yet, people with their own will are embracing Islam. They study Islam and then they embrace. That, this is how Islam has always spread. So it's, it's a big lie when somebody says that Islam spread by force or Islam spread with sword. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La ikraha fid deen. There is no compulsion in in religion. So this is ayah number 556. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, after this, you know this uh, ayah, ayah number uh, 264, as I have requested you earlier, please have Quran handy in your, uh, with you, so that you can switch to these ayahs quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 264, is giving you and me a very, very ethical, and a very important um, um, etiquette of life. And Allah is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheen amunu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal aza. O those people who believe, do not spoil, do not spoil your charities by mentioning it. By mentioning it. And wal aza. And by hurting the person whom you are helping. I'll repeat. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu. O those people who believe. La tubtilu sadaqatikum. Do not spoil the reward of your sadaqat. Of your charity. Bil man. By mentioning it over and over again. And wal adha. And by hurting the person whom you have helped. Brothers and sisters. Such a beautiful and important uh, guideline that you and I must adhere to. You know, these days you see people, you know, when they are helping someone, they want to take a photograph. Like uh, during this uh, coronavirus, uh, in many countries, uh, people are giving like a bag of uh, food uh, to someone in need and then they want uh, the camera to click. In fact, they have their own children or family member or someone out there who will click the photo and then they will spread it on WhatsApp, on social media. So this poor person who is going through such hardships, you are disgracing him by putting his photograph on social media, showing that he is receiving help from you. That is not right. One should try to help people without hurting the sentiments of the people. 
You see? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you will do so, right? If you will do so, you are spoiling sadaqat. Meaning you, will, you are not going to get no, no reward out of it. So when we help someone, we should not even mention it. Man means that when you mention it, sometime to the same person who, whom you have helped. I mean, you are mentioning your favors to that person. Allah is saying, this is such a heinous act that I'm not going to get, give you any reward for this kind of charity. Therefore, the best kind of charity is that when you, when you give charity and you do not let even that person whom you have helped know that you have helped. Brothers and sisters, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, a sahabi, when he passed away, when he passed away, hundreds of households in Madina Munawwara, right, came to know that it was this person who had passed away who used to help them. Because he will come with his, with his face covered with cloth, he will come at night, and he will put food and other stuff at the threshold of their houses. He will do so in complete darkness, secrecy. But when he passed away, that help that these people used to give, get, it stopped. When it stopped, then people came to know, oh, it was Abdullah ibn Abbas. That is the correct way of helping. So please, brothers and sisters, in this coronavirus pandemic, when we are helping people out, please do not embarrass those people by taking photographs that you are helping them. Never ever mention, never ever mention to those people that, you know, I have helped you in the past. If you have helped, you should help only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is ayah number 264. Now, now my dear brothers and sisters, regarding helping further, on, in, in ayah number 273 quickly, 273. In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about people who would never ask you for help. In Urdu we say safed poshlo. Meaning people who will never ever go to your house and, and beg you for money or food. They would rather die than go and ask for help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Oh people, you have enough knowledge and enough common sense to know who is who in the community. And when you come to know that this person is hiding his problem from you, go and help that person out without even knowing him or without even telling him that you are helping him. Let me read this ayah first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said in surah two, uh, ayah number 273 لِلْ فُقْرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُحْسِرُوا Ta'rifuhum bisimahum. La yas aluna nas al hafa. Allah said there are help. Fuqara means people who are working for Islam. They are fuqara. Alladina uhsiru fi sabilillah. And then Allah said, these people are talented people. These people, their IQ level is very high. If they were to go to a regular university, they would have achieve high degrees, but no. They went to Islamic seminary, for example. They become shuyukh. They became muftis. They are serving deen throughout their lives. Throughout their lives. And what are, uh, what are they getting? They are getting a very, very low salary, but still they are teaching. And I'm just giving you an example, right? Allah said that Jahil, ignorant people, when they look at these people, for example, scholars, they say, oh, these scholars have too much money. Look, uh, look, uh, you know, they are okay, you know, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
they get this feeling because the scholars have self-respect. They have self-respect. تَعْرِفُهُمْ بِسِيمَامُ لَا يَسْأَلُونَ النَّاسِ الْحَافَةِ These people will never ever spread their hand to ask. But Allah said, تَعْرِفُهُمْ بِسِيمَامُ You should know who is who. You should get a feeling about a person's financial condition. You are, you are living with them year after year. So Allah is saying, go and help people out. Right? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about أُحْسِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ those people who are doing the work of deen, they are so much occupied with working for deen that they cannot go and do business and open shops and, and, and work in offices. They, they feel that my plate is full. I have to do so much for deen. So that, that's why they are not getting enough salary. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you should go and help them out. They are never going to come to your doorstep and beg. Right? So this is something that is very, very, very important for us to know. Uh, before I move on, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something personal. You know, back in 1987, uh, my dad, Rahimahullah, admitted me to Islamic seminary. Um, and this is something very important, my brother and sister, for you to know. In this Islamic seminary is a world renounced seminary called Daul Ulum Nadwatul Ulama uh, Nadwis, Nadwis, you know, people who graduate from there, they are called Nadwis. So I, I told you earlier that, that my basic uh, elementary and secondary education was from like a Catholic school. So when I went there, uh, that eight year Alim course uh, was uh, cut down to five years for me because, because I had some pre- uh, uh, prior education on, on, on in Arabic language, anyhow. So I spent six years, five years as an in the alim course and one year in the mufti course. I had the good fortune of learning from one of the brightest minds that I have ever come across. And one of my teacher, rahimahullah, who passed away uh, like 10, 12 years ago or fifteen years ago, uh, his name was Sheikh Birjis Nadwi. My brother, brothers and sisters, I cannot completely express to you how genius he was. He had command over Arabic language, Urdu language, Persian language. And when he will come to the classroom to teach us, either it was Hadith of, or, the, or the Adab of, of uh, Arabic language, or whatever, or Tariq, when he will speak, we will wish that the period could be extended to another half an hour, 40, 45 minutes. His speech was full of knowledge and eloquence. But my dear brothers and sisters, when I came to know how little he is paid for his day-long service, I was shocked. In today's uh, time, I, I would say $100 a month. That's all. $100 a month he was paid. But he was content. He has wife and two, three kids. I do not know how they used to survive. And this is the condition of nearly every alim, every mudarris, every teacher in these Islamic seminaries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that fi these people are there serving deen. So not it is the responsibility of the, of the people out there to serve them. Don't criticize them all the time. If you want, you can criticize. That's fine. But help them as well. They are doing such a tremendous job. Anyhow, so this is ayah number 273. And then, the, and then uh, from ayah number 276 to 279, uh, these ayahs are talking about riba, about interest, usually. We know that in Islam, usually, or interest, riba is haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayahs have very categorically, very forcefully, 
have said that you must stop dealing in interest whether giving interest or eat or, or taking interest it is haram right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if you will not stop doing so if you will not stop then the punishment of allah will come over you so please read these ayahs whenever you have to have time these ayahs are very important for you to know i'll just read one part of this these ayahs allah said فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا And please, brothers and sisters, note this. فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If you will not stop dealing in interest and riba, so that is as if you have waged a war against Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning you are saying, Allah, I don't accept it. Allah, I, I don't agree with it. So that is as if you have waged a war against Allah and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is why my dear brothers and sisters, may Allah protect you and me from dealing in, in interest. This is something that is very heinous in our religion. By the way, in Judaism, among the, the Catholic, uh, I'm sorry, among the Orthodox Christ, uh, Jewish people, you know, they also uh, share this view about riba. So it's not just Quran that had prohibited riba, Torah has also a prohibited riba. So please read these ayahs and inshallah you will get a better understanding of, of riba. Now my dear brothers, brothers and sisters, quickly moving to Al-Imran. I said Al-Imran means the, the family of Imran. And Imran was the grandfather of Isa alayhi salatu uh, In this, uh, in this uh, uh, surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had talked about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam in detail, but before uh, we do so, there are one or two ayahs that I would like to uh, briefly touch on. Uh, very important that I touch on before I move to the story of Al Imran. Um, my dear brothers and sisters, during Khandaq, the, the war of trench, remember Badr has taken place, Uhad has taken place, these two wars had taken place. And the enemies of Islam had faced defeats after defeats. So what they did was that they thought, let's have a third go against Muslims and let's go in a way that, that we have never attacked Muslims before. So what they did was that they assembled a huge army, a huge army of all the, all the enemies of Islam came together. And there were as many as 10,000 of them. Now 10,000 was a big figure at that time. So 10,000 of them came to attack Madina Munawwara. When Rasulullah Wasallam got the news that such a huge army is coming, Rasulullah asked opinion from Sahaba, what should be done? So Salman Farsi, who was a Sahabi from uh, Iran, he said that, O oh, Prophet of Allah, back in Iran, we dig trench around our cities. So this way, nobody can jump over the trench. If they will try to cross the trench, they are going to fall into it. So this way, will we keep our city safe? So our Rasulullah liked that idea. Rasulullah Wasallam orders the harbor to start digging. So they had to dig the trench deep and wide. Now, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was digging with them. He was digging, he was working like a common man. I mean, that is another feature of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He never acted like he's the boss. And everybody has to listen and he's going to sit, uh, sit under a shade. No. He would work like a common man. So when everybody was digging, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was digging as well. So what happened was, the incident that happened was that some Sahaba were digging and a huge rock came up in their way of digging. So they tried to break the rock, but they could not. So they sent Salman Farsi to Rasulullah. So Rasulullah came. Rasulullah took a hammer, a huge hammer. And Rasulullah hit that rock. A part of that rock broke. And a light came out. It came and went away. 
And our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to Sahaba. He said, do you know, I just now saw the palaces of Iran. Just now I saw the palaces of Iran. And then Rasulullah took the hammer and hit that huge rock second time. A part of the rock broke and another light came out and went away. And this time our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that guess what? I Allah showed me the palaces of Rome, meaning Syria. And then Rasulullah hit that rock third time. A part of that rock broke and the light came and went away. And Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam said that Allah showed me the palace of Sana'a, meaning Yemen. Well, when this news spread that what Rasulullah have said, the hypocrites started making fun of Rasulullah. They were saying that, look at these people. They don't have enough to eat. They don't have enough to drink. Look at their clothes. They, they don't have enough clothes to hide their bodies. They are hungry and thirsty. And look at what Muhammad is telling them. That one day they are going to conquer uh, Iran and the huge Roman Empire and this huge Yemen, they are going to overcome them. So they used to make fun, they, they used to taunt. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah in Surah Al Imran, ayah number 26 and 27. 26 and 27. The same ayah that I mentioned to you on Juma, and that is, Qulillahumma malik al mulk. تُؤْتِلْ مُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ تُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَتُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَتَرْزُقُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ When this ayah was revealed our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to sahaba that go and read this surah this ayahs to those people who are saying so and my dear brothers and sisters Within years of the revelation of these two ayahs, the whole world saw that the Persian Empire fell and Muslims were ruling. The Roman Empire fell and Muslims were ruling. The Yemen was under the control of Muslims. The prophecy of our Rasul became a reality within a few years, within a few years, within 10 15 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is saying, O oh, oh Muhammad sallallahu teach that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the controller of everything. Tu'til mulk man tasha. Allah can give the country to anyone that he wishes. And watanzi'ul mulk min man tasha. And Allah can snatch a dynasty, a kingdom, power from anyone he wishes. Watu'izzu man tasha. And Allah can give honor to the one he wishes. And Allah can give disgrace to the one He wishes. And in your hand, O oh Allah, is all good. So, brothers and sisters, these ayahs were in defense of our Rasul. And as I said, that you saw that the prophecies of Rasul came true. This is another mu'jizah and miracle of our Rasul. Then ayah number 31 of Surah Al Imran is one of the most famous ayahs of Quran. Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. Yuhbibkum Allah, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Subhanallah, my, my dear brothers and sisters, this ayah is talking about the importance of the sunnah of Rasul Allah is saying, O oh Muhammad, tell them, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you people love Allah, if you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Then you follow me. Do ittiba' of Rasul. Follow Rasulullah lifestyle, his sunnah. يُحْبِبُكُمُ Allah. Then Allah will start loving you. Allah will start loving you when? When you will follow Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa this means without following Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no deen. Deen came with Rasulullah. Quran was brought by Rasulullah. 
Therefore, Quran is teaching us the importance of Sunnah, the importance of Hadith. That you can become a Muslim only when you follow Rasulullah. Right? Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, follow the each and every Sunnah of Rasulullah. If you will do so, Allah will love you. Because you are loving the Habib of Allah. So Allah will love you. Without following the Sunnah, Allah is not going to, to love you. For example, eating. What is the Sunnah of eating? Sit down and eat. Sit down. Don't stand up and eat. Drinking. Sit down and drink. Right? See, these are the common Sunnahs that we should follow. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, loving Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means following his Sunnah. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will love us. Okay. Now, my dear, dear brothers and sisters, now quickly move on to the main topic of Surah Al Imran, ayah number 34. And this is a long topic that goes all the way to till ayah number 68. I don't have much time to spend on this, but let me see how much I can cover this. Um, this ayah, ayah number 34 of Surah Al Imran. Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمَ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِمَ وَآلَ عِمْرَانَ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ ذُرِّيَةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that all the prophets are from, from the same family. Whether it is Adam or Nuh or Ibrahim, all of them are from the same family. So is the family of Imran. Now what happened was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةِ عِمْرَان Imran was an Imam of Majlul Aqsa, Jerusalem. He was a scholar, he was not a prophet, but he was an immensely knowledgeable person. He was a very famous and reputed Imam of Baitul Maqdis. So when his wife was pregnant, she made a Dua. The, the wife of Imran made a dua. And she said, Inni Rabbi inni nazartu laka ma fi batni muharraran fataqabbal minni. O oh Allah, when I will deliver my child, I want to dedicate my child to the service of your house. Meaning, Baitul Baghdis. So Allah accepted. So when فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا When she delivered the baby, قَالَتْ إِنِّي وَضَعَتُهَا أُنْثَا She said, O oh, oh Allah, I have delivered a female baby. Allah said, وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ And Allah knows well what she had delivered. وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَا Allah said, yes, a male is different than a female. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm going to name this baby. Now, brothers and sisters, remember, look at the holiness of Maryam. That, وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا Maryam. Allah said, I'm going to name this baby Maryam. So it was not her parents who named her Maryam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself named this baby Maryam. And Allah said, وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ and I'm going to protect her. Allah is going to protect her. وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا And her generation from Mina Shaitan Rajim. From the Shaitan Rajim. This is why my dear brother said that Maryam, Virgin Mary, was a very, very unique person. Allah named her and Allah said, I'm going to protect her and her a progeny from Shaitan. So what happened was that Maryam, when she was in, in the cradle, her mother took her to the masjid. By that time, Imran had passed away. The father had passed away. But she was known. This family was known to the people. The people of Jerusalem. So, Maryam's mother said, well, I have to fulfill my pledge. I'm going to dedicate my baby to the service of Bethel Maqdis. Guess who came forward? 
to, to become her guardian. Her own uncle, Khalu. Her own uncle, Zakaria. Now, Zakaria was a prophet. Prophet, he, he said, Wakafalaha Zakaria. He said, Don't worry, I'm her uncle. I'm going to become her guardian. Now she was, she started living in one of the, uh, one of the rooms of Bethel Magdis. And Zakaria, the uncle, was the guardian. Right? So, now look at this. Quran says, Kullama dakhala alayha Zakaria al-Mihraba wajada indaha rizqa. Whenever Zakaria will enter, into the room of, of Maryam, he will find some fruits. He will find some fruits. So those fruits were not to be found in Jerusalem. So he would say, Anna laki hadha. Oh my child, tell me, how do you get these fruits? Who bring these fruits? Because these fruits are not to be found in the markets in, in uh, Jerusalem. Qalat huwa min indillah. She would say that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. No doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants whatever he wishes, whenever he wishes. So at that time, Zakaria understood that an angel from Allah brings these fruits to her. So he understood how pious, how close Maryam is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Zakaria was a prophet. He knew that this is the best place to make dua. And Zakaria at that time made dua. Qal rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyiba innaka samiu dua Zakaria at that time made dua that, O oh Allah, O oh my Rabb, grant me children. Grant, grant me children. You are the one who listens to everyone's dua. Zakaria at that time had no children. He had grown old. He seized this, this opportunity and he made that dua. Allah accepted that dua. Allah said, فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ one day Zakaria was praying Salah in Majl Aqsa in the Mihrab. You know where the Imam stands? There. He was praying Salah. Angels came and they said, Anna Allah yubashiruka biyahya musaddiqam bi kalimatim min Allah wa sayyidam wa hasuram wa nabiyya min salihin. Angel said, Oh Zakaria, Allah is giving you a glad tiding. That Allah is going to give you a son. And the name of that son should be Yahya. Meaning Allah had prescribed the name as well, Yahya. And Yahya is going to be a Sayyida. He is going to be one of the leader among the leaders of this world. Wahasura. And he is going to be an extremely pious person. Why? And he is going to be a prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this baby Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam to Zakaria. Now Yahya is, no, is known as John. Christians know him as, as John the Baptist. We Muslims believe in him as a prophet of Allah and we know him by the name Yahya. At that time when he got this good news, he said, Rabbi Anna Yakunu li Ghulam Wakad Balagani al Kibar Wamr Ati Aqir. He said, Oh Allah, how can I become a father when I have grown old and my wife is barren? Allah said, I can do whatever I wish. And when he got the son, he said, Qal Rabbi Ali Aya. Oh Allah, tell me how can I thank you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah tukallim an nasa thalafata ayyaman illa ramza. Do not talk to anyone for three days except for sign language. This would be a way to thank, thank me. And do zikr of Allah day and night. 
This is the story of Zakaria and Yahya alayhi salatu was salam. Now my dear brothers and sisters, I have gone five minutes over the time. So I will stop here. And inshallah the story of Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu was and Maryam, very beautiful story inshallah. I think in the sixth juz, the same story is going to be repeated. So inshallah, I will cover the story of, of Isa alayhi salatu was at that time. But as, as you can see that the third juz is full of such beautiful guidelines and ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have put in the third juz. When we hear the, the tilawat of Quran in tonight's taravi, please try to listen to these ayahs with, with understanding. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can fill your heart and my heart with his love and the love of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So jazakallahu khair for watching. Inshallah I'll be back with juice number four tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka.